scientists from fisheries and conservation backgrounds have joined forces in a groundbreaking assessment of the status of global fisheries. The study, led by Boris Worm of Dalhousie University and Ray Hilborn of the University of Washington, is published in the July 31st issue of the journal Science. So the main finding of this paper is that although fisheries are in trouble, we do see a glimmer of hope in that uh, in half of the ecosystem that we examined in detail, exploitation rate is declining. The areas that have moved successfully towards recovery have employed a diverse suit of management tools, including reducing catches, implementing closed areas, gear restrictions, catch shares, and community-based management. This study is a follow-up to another science paper published by Dr. Worm. It projected that all commercial fisheries would collapse by 2048 unless management practices improve. That result led to a public disagreement between Drs. Worm and Hilborn, but through their subsequent discussions, the two scientists recognized a shared sense of purpose. They decided to collaborate. In the last 15 years, there's been growing concern about the status of world fisheries and their sustainability and most of the studies had looked only at catch data. Uh, catch data isn't a particularly good measure of abundance and we were able to find for a number of ecosystems around the world scientific assessments that track the abundance of individual fish stocks and uh, surveys that, that go out and scientifically measure the abundance of fish stocks and use those data to look at the status of the ecosystems. Our analysis is based on three main data sources. Number one, we had very detailed data on stock abundance and exploitation rate in 10 ecosystems. We had more broad data on ecosystem surveys from 20 regions, and we had ecosystem models of about 30 regions, and then we had catches from the whole world. This works like a Russian doll, where each piece informs the next level, and it gives us a more precise, more accurate way of assessing the status of world fisheries and the oceans than we ever have been before. We found quite a bit of contrast in performance. Some were doing much better than others, and we've been able to look and see what characteristics uh, seem to be associated with some of the fisheries that are doing well. The regions that have made the greatest, greatest advances towards recovery are California, New England, and Iceland, but also we see signs of recovery uh, in other regions around the world. Although the author's analysis was mostly confined to intensively managed fisheries in developed countries, some developing nations also showed positive signs. In Kenya, for example, scientists, managers, and local communities have teamed up to close some key areas to fishing and restrict certain types of fishing gear. While this study offers new hope for rebuilding global fisheries, the authors agree that there is still a long way to go. The bad news is that most of the world's fisheries still are being harvested too hard and we need to reduce the amount of exploitation. The good news is that we know how to rebuild them and the tools that fisheries managers have in hand are sufficient to do that if we're willing to put up with the short-term pain associated with reduced catches. The take-home message here is that fisheries and oceans are not a lost cause. We can recover depleted resources if we ease up on exploitation rate. And this has ecological and economic benefits that we see established in a few regions that have taken these steps today. I really hope that this paper can provide people with a new vision about the ocean. Not a place of loss and depletion, but a place that can be managed for recovery so we can regain what has been lost in the past.